Welcome to NewSoft Technologies Medical Practice Management Podcast Series. I'm Lindsay Coates. Mobile technology is at the forefront of nearly every industry, and healthcare IT is no exception. My guests today are Neil Versell and Greg Gillespie. Neil, how are typical medical practices using mobile technology today? It's the one piece of technology that doctors haven't been really forced to use. Instead, they're the ones that are discovering that the technology works well for them, and they're not being forced to do it by someone from above like they are, say, with electronic health records. You know, 10 years ago, they bought themselves Palm Pilots and said, uh, you know, this is going to be great for my scheduling or for my, just to keep my phone good. Now they're buying smartphones and finding that, you know, there are all things, all kinds of things they can do in their practice. In fact, uh, you know, many hospitals are now struggling with the fact that doctors are coming in with smartphones and saying they want to be on the network wirelessly and, you know, with their mobile devices. So, you know, it's the doctors that are really pushing the adoption here, not uh, the other way around. Neil brings up a very interesting point about the fact that, you know, physicians haven't been forced to adopt this technology. Uh, When you're talking about the typical medical practices, what we're seeing is that what they're using it for is a lot of productivity um, applications, uh, just sorting out their calendar, keeping in touch with their office. Um, You know, the medical slant to those applications are... They have some e-prescribing. They're, they're doing a lot of prescription refills. And what's interesting about this market, and as Neil alluded to, is that, you know, there's a real gap between, you know, physicians that are using it for kind of mundane tasks, and then you have uh, physicians that are um, doing amazing things with it, you know, use them for very clinical purposes. Um, and you see hospitals moving ahead. Some hospitals moving ahead very aggressively, too. So it's, it's a real kind of mix in the market right now. Greg, what percentage of physicians do you think are using apps for clinical purposes? When you're talking about a practice-based physician, I wouldn't say a heck of a lot. But when you're talking about the hospitals where they have privileges, that's where I think the, the, the real clinical applications are being developed and being released out to the medical community. Some hospitals have very been very aggressive about developing the mobile applications and just developing access into their, you know, their different information systems. So that's really where where the clinical applications are coming from. Neil, what kind of advantages or disadvantages do you see to physicians using these apps? Well, I think the advantage is clear. I mean, it's better productivity anywhere they want, anywhere they are. The example could be referring physician can't get to the hospital might be able to, you know, tap in to the hospital's record system or imaging system and take a look at the record, take a look at lab reports, take a look at uh, even medical images on, you know, on a smartphone or on some other mobile device, you know, provide a diagnosis or provide a consultation remotely. As far as disadvantages, sure, you're not getting, for example, the same resolution if you're looking at images on a small handheld device. It's getting better, though, I think the, uh, you know, tablets such as the iPad becoming more popular. But I think uh, I don't really see much of a downside except uh, in the gray area of whether apps might be regulated as medical devices, and that's you know, something I think we're going to get to in a few minutes. I don't see a lot of disadvantages either except that you, you know, if you're not expecting too much, you, you have to respect or you have to understand that form factor. Physician cannot operate every aspect of their you know, of their job through an iPhone, and it's not intuitive enough. It's it's the, the small form factor, um, the resolution, as Neil mentioned. And Neil brought up something that's um, I think is on a lot of people's minds about the FDA possibly regulating these as, as medical devices. I see a lot of downside to that, just to kind of stifle the innovation. You know, that's well, that's occurring right now. I think the advantages are absolutely enormous. If it's a device that's incorporated, it's an additive device to a physician or, or you know, or nurse's um, practice of medicine, then there's not really much downside to it. Do you think physicians are adopting mobile technology at a swift pace, or are they lagging behind? Well, I think it's been a tremendously swift pace. I mean, for a decade now, Hippocrates has claimed, even before smartphones, Hippocrates has claimed hundreds of thousands of physician users. I think there are over a million and a half total users in terms of uh, not just physicians, but nurses and other medical professionals. 
I think the adoption has been, uh, been phenomenal, and I think there was some big news just in the last uh, couple of weeks that there's going to be a medical uh, app section in the Google Android market. That was a big deal for a lot of people uh, because there is just so much demand for medical apps, for healthcare apps, and, you know, personal health and fitness apps as well. You want to look on the consumer side, too. I think the adoption is, it's been enormous, but when we talk about getting into mobile apps, I think physicians are, when it comes to productivity and, and calendar and, you know, some of the, again, the mundane tasks, they've jumped all over those. The adoption is not so much, it's not just a physician issue, it's really who's supporting these these clinical applications, who's supporting these applications. I mean, you kind of can, can turn around the conversation and say how many hospital IT departments have a, you know, have embraced this, the, the mobile applications and not as many as physicians. The enthusiasm is not as high as it is on the, the actual physician side of the equation. However, I think I'd, I'd like to jump in here and say that there are several medical schools out there that have issued smartphones or starting this year, I believe, with Stanford and I think John Hopkins issuing iPads to every medical resident and uh, many other medical students as well. So it's right. become part of the practice at those large academic medical centers. Is the adoption of mobile technology in healthcare improving patient care? I think it's giving physicians a lot more information at the time they make the decision because, you know, for years an on-call physician was just that, on-call. The doctor would pick up the phone and have to, you know, try to make a decision essentially with no information. Now they can, you know, actually look at the medical record, look at the lab report, look at test results, look at images remotely, and have that information in front of them when they make decisions. If you look at it, just the idea of, of simplifying a, a work day, I mean, structuring a work day, that to anyone, a physician or you know anybody in any field, that's that makes them more productive. That does translate into patient care if they have a, they're more organized, they're more focused especially the, the ones that are linked to electronic health records. They're actually connected to the environment that those physicians are working in. And some of them are, are, are so cleverly designed, or they're designed to give them the information, just the information they need. You know, that, that's the beauty of a mobile device. It can, it can deliver that discrete data that is the actual data that makes the difference, you know, that, that lets them diagnose, it makes them, lets them take an action in terms of patient care. So. And, and also reference materials are right there at hand as well, you know, that are regularly updated, whereas you've, you've got a big bulky reference book, well, it's out, it's, out, it's out of date as soon as it's printed. New medical knowledge, new studies, for example, are right there in the palm of your hand. What do you see as the future of mobile health care? Well, I think the devices are only going to get more powerful. There are a variety of form factors now being tried, you know, somewhere in between the Palm Pilot of 10 years ago and the iPad of today, there's, for example, the you know the smaller tablets like, say, the Samsung Galaxy Tab that is about half the size of an iPad, and actually I've seen it fit in a lab coat pocket. There are, you know, there are just more choices out there for, for physicians. You know, one phrase that I've heard thrown around in the last couple of years is unified communication. Instead of having to carry multiple devices like, say, a cell phone, a couple of pagers, it's all going to be coming into one device. Right now, we're we're at a point where the mobile technology, it's an, as I mentioned before, it's an additive technology. It's something that you know they're we're working on a desktop, they're working on a um, you know a stationary laptop, and this is something they're using in a different environment, in a transition environment. For for example, I think the the iPad is the you know the first example of that new form factor. We've had tablets around for a long time, but a tablet is the last generation is very clunky. It's not very user friendly. What's going to happen is that you know when we talk about a full screen. Well, we're putting full screen in in today's perception of a full screen would be a full screen laptop or you know a a large desktop screen. I think the idea of what a full screen is is going to be it's going to be driven by the device, and I think the software is going to you know be developed to that to fit that new kind of environment. It's not going to be an additive kind of you know device or or, or a, um, a secondary design of the software. It's going to be the primary device, the primary environment the software is developed for. So I think it's 
you know, we're, we're just right at the beginning right now. There's a whole world of mobile healthcare that we haven't even gotten into, and that's on the patient side. Right. As far as monitoring patients at home or being able to do a, a video chat with the doctor, you know, from anywhere in the case of, you know, a, a minor health question, you know, something a little less acute than an emergency. You know, home monitoring is is getting ready to explode from what I understand. Thank you both for joining us today. I'd like to remind everyone that this is part of a three-part series, so we'll be delving into video and patient portal technologies as well, so you'll have to be sure to check those out. Thank you all for watching.